Hi, science teachers. Welcome to Science Teacher Summer School, Episode 6. I'm Kent Louie, and something you may not know about me is that writing a song that makes it onto the Billboard Top 10 is on my bucket list. I'm just not sure if it's going to be in pop or rock or country or hip hop or maybe grunge I hear is making a comeback. Now, let's get to work. A few episodes ago, I talked about the most important skill I teach in my class. It's called CER. It's a structure students use to communicate their scientific conclusions and arguments. For more, please go back to episode two of Science Teacher Summer School. Although I teach it every year, I'm constantly revamping how I teach it because I still find my students struggling to do it. We go over definitions and examples, but still it's not enough. Some are still stuck. So I wondered this past year why students were still struggling and what could be done to get them unstuck. I found inspiration in some of my daughter's workbooks. You know the ones you can buy at Costco that say Math Smart or Complete Canadian Curriculum. One thing these workbooks are really good at is providing good templates for tackling a problem. I especially like the prompts and the fill in the blank exercises these workbooks had. These really help lead a student to a solution. So this past year, I developed detailed prompts for each lab we did. The point was to show students one way to structure their conclusions using CER. Consider an experiment where we're studying how temperature affects how quickly food coloring diffuses in water. We've all done an experiment like this before. You get a beaker of water, maybe warm water, you put a drop of food coloring in it, yeah, and then you time how long it takes for the dye to spread. Afterwards, you get a beaker of hot water, drop a food, some food coloring in that, and then you take a cup of cold water and you do the same. When it came time for my students to write a CR statement for this lab, I provided these prompts. For claim, I wrote out, when water temperature increases or decreases, the rate of diffusion increases or decreases. Students would rewrite the statement and choose the words that best described the relationship they observed. For more advanced students, I, I would provide a more general prompt, like what is the relationship between water temperature and the rate of diffusion? For evidence, I gave students the following statement to copy and complete. According to my observations, in hot water, it took X seconds for the dye to diffuse. In warm water, it took Y seconds. And in cold water, it took Z seconds. And students basically took their data and filled in those X, Y, Z, Z variables. For reasoning, I gave students the following prompt. One explanation for this result is, and students were supposed to provide their explanation. Now, armed with these prompts, a student could write something like this. When warm water, sorry, when water temperature increases, the rate of diffusion increases. According to my observations, in hot water, it took eight seconds for the dye to diffuse. In warm water, it took 90 seconds for the dye to diffuse. And in cold water, it was not able to diffuse at all. One explanation for this result is due to kinetic molecular theory. Since warmer particles move faster than colder ones, when dye is added to hot water, the water particles will move faster and spread the dye quicker. Now, that's a pretty complete conclusion, one that captures the data and theory together with an experimental observation. And that's what prompts can help you do. It can help your students structure a better conclusion, a better CER statement, especially for those who are struggling to do so. If you're looking for resources to get your students started using CER, prompts perhaps, worksheets and sample data to analyze, I have an ebook coming out soon that will have a bunch of useful stuff for you. Go to my website, realsciencechallenge.com, and sign up for our newsletter to get updates. That's all the time we have for this episode. Please write your questions in the comments section below. Join me next time 
when I'll be talking about educational technology and the one mistake we all make when it comes to using it. You don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching, and remember to science everywhere, every day.